Hello there, Seraphim17 once again. This is my Dark Souls 3 video walkthrough. This is the fourth sequence of it, and it is the Road of Sacrifices. We are going to be doing some preparation here at Firelink Shrine, and using uh, all the resources that we can at the moment just to, to give us a little bit of an edge. And uh, I'm not entirely too sure what I'm going to be doing in, in this particular installment before we get to Road of Sacrifices because I haven't seen it in a while. Gracious. But immediately I am struck by the 30 frames per second of this game because I've just come off playing God Hand, which uh, runs very fast. So you'll notice I'm buying uh, a handful of charcoal, pine, uh, charcoal resins, which is a great tool for any weapon that's not infused because, well, technically this weapon is infused, but it can still be buffed because it's not elemental. So it's essentially sampling double damage, and you'll notice our raw Astora Sword is going to be given some Titanite to, to bump it up a little bit to plus two. You can take all the time you want in the world here, guys, getting these weapons stronger. There's a lot of ways of doing it if you know how, if you know where to find the resources and, and get the appropriate coals, if that's your thing. Uh, we're just going to be playing. We're not going to be doing too much farming. There's there's no real need for it. Everything that we don't use on our weapon, we will be dumping into getting a bit more endurance, getting a couple more luck, and getting a couple more vigor, because that's what we're going to be um, specking into with this particular character. So now that we've done some of these sundries, some of these miscellaneous tasks, we can get back to, to where we were. But first, make sure you burn all your bone shards so you can get all those upgraded flasks, and then we'll get back to where we were. Which is going to be either the underside of the cliff or the dilapidated bridge. And the choice was made, so that's where we'll go. So back to the undead settlement. An area that gives you as much as you give it, which is why I really enjoy it, because there's a lot to discover here, there's a lot of nook and crannies, and there's a lot of little skips if you're willing to experiment with spook. Uh, this is another one we're going to be doing again. Uh, I'm going to be dropping down here and negating fall damage. I'm going to be double checking to make sure nobody throws any firebombs at me. And I'm going to wait for this little congregation of idiots to move on, because I don't want to get gangbanged by terrible pathing on the dogs. Additionally, we're going to be running through this this little gauntlet here, and there's going to be plenty of those manservants throwing pots at me, dogs attacking me, and general peasants having a crack with the old plow and what have you. So, as soon as he throws, you want to roll. As soon as he throws, you want to roll, and then you want to appreciate that it will take you a while to open this door, and all of these people are going to chase you into this room. If you want to be all super speedrun elite, you can quit out here and it will reset all the spawns and make the door open, but I'm not too bothered instead. I wanted to show you the inside of my character's face, so there's the back of her eyeballs, and we're going to meet good old Sigmire, who is going to troll us actually, because if he wasn't here pissing about with this elevator, we wouldn't have to worry about people chasing us in here, and uh, they are going to chase you in here, believe you me, so you need to be careful, but that went really, really well for once. Wow, I just said that they were going to chase you in, and they haven't. This is rare, this guys. They normally always follow you in here, so be very careful on your run. But I talked to good old Seagy. I'm going to be going up into the tower now, so I can talk to the giant, make him friendly. And if you're wondering how the giant works mechanically, as long as you keep his branch that he gives you, he will be your friend. If you get rid of it, he will start aiming at you again. And then at a certain point in the game, the giant dies of old age. So, nobody kills him, there's no crazy assassin or anything, he just passes away. So after that threshold, he will no longer be able to help you because he's no longer in this mortal realm. But we're going to be dropping off just here, on this balcony, and then we're going to be talking to good old Zigi. So, at this point, we're going to be taking on a demon who is very reminiscent of an old friend. And you're going to be taking him on co-op with Sigmire. Sigmire is a boss. He can heal, he does very big damage, he can stunlock this creature, but you are at the mercy of very interesting AI. Sometimes he'll be a beast, other times not so much. And you'll hear him, because as soon as you start fighting, he'll go, You should have waited! Or whatever he says. There he goes. And that means he's going to join the fight, so... Uh, I take a big uh, thrust into my face just then. Not what a lady wants to be doing with her time in the Souls games. And I back up for a quick cheeky heal while Sigmire starts screaming and goes all barbarian with his Vihander. So we're just going to gangbang this demon. Nothing impressive here, guys. We've got a very strong weapon. We're going to stunlock him. He's going to go down. And then we're going to proceed to get a couple of rings that are important. And you can get a fire gem. You can get one of the Sieg brews off a of good old Siege. And then he will give you a couple of taunts if you keep speaking to him before he goes to sleep and then after he goes to sleep. So there's your opportunity to grab that. 
but that's the large club. Up here is going to be one of the starting classes armor and we're going to be going through these next few buildings for the sheer purpose of getting the fling ring and reinforcing our stamina regeneration with the chlorinthy ring which is pretty important. It's not the be all end all but it's a ring I enjoy to use early on. Of course the plus two rings are all the best rings. Plus two chloranthi gives you plus nine stamina regeneration per second. It is the most powerful tool outside of the budding uh, green blossoms. And unfortunately, you cannot buy those budding blossoms just yet. So I'm hoping the DLC implements that because we need to be able to buy them. They are really, really good for, for fighting gankers and everything. Uh, I don't know why you can't. Additionally, if you want to get them, you have to farm those awful looking centipede spider monsters in Irithyll, which... Not my idea of a fun time as I get trolled by a dog. And there's another dog in here, so be careful. Such a dangerous enemy. Oh, I missed my jump attack. But I catch him on the roll attack. Doesn't knock him over, so now he starts to, to dance with us. Having a nice little spacing war. He's taunting, which is always fun. That's going to drop the cages, so be careful here, guys. A little bit of a trap. Don't panic and you'll be fine. It gives us the human pine resin, which is the dark enchantment for your weapon. It is one of the most powerful enchantments in the game because a lot of the enemies, a lot of the bosses are weak to dark, so that's great. And if you're going, if you're going to do any PvP, sorry, it's really good against people's armor because dark is one of the elements that the game doesn't give you too much to defend against it because it's not as prevalent as the other things. So that's really useful for for getting and squeezing those extra bit of damage out. But reapply spook, push forward over here. We're going to be dropping down. Uh, be careful though, Spook doesn't last forever, and if you end up doing a big fall, you'll take massive damage if it wears off, but it was long enough for us to, to get down to Chloranthi, and that's all we needed it to do. There's the mirror armor, if you're interested in looking like somebody from Mira, and then from here, we're going to be going back the way we came towards that uh, bridge, and we're going to be going to the Road of Sacrifices. But first, there is one of these challenging ladies in our face, so we're going to give her a quick slap. There's the double book slam. There's me trying to do a parry with a catalyst. Very amateur hour. There's the Cradle of Filth grab. Nice dodge and thrust and good night. Just look at the damage we're doing with this raw sword. And we haven't even upgraded it as well as we could. Because at this point, you can get your weapons quite easily up to stuff like plus six. And if you really know what you're doing and you're willing to kill the dancer early, you can get it up to plus nine, even plus ten. So... Pretty crazy how powerful you can make yourself in this game if you can kill the dancer early. And that is quite a tall if, because she's not the easiest of bosses, but she's also not that bad. The only problem on Xbox One is the frame rate might as well be her ally, because it's going to shit the bed so much on that encounter if you get those, you know, flaily patterns where there's all those particle effects happening. And it literally goes down to about 15 frames a second. It makes it such a miserable fight. Here is Mr. Uh, repeat until he hits you. And then we parry him with the Cestus and put him down. Mash him as he gets up, finish him off. Nice and simple. Ooh, he drops the Great Machete as well. One of my favourite slow weapons in the game. Biggest problem I find with that weapon is it doesn't conventionally combo. There are times when you can get a guaranteed two hits, there are other times when enemies can roll out of it, so... There's me trying to parry without any stamina, because I missed my parry on the partial. We take this guy down again. My recommendation for parrying this creature is to essentially set up parry them. They have a lot of attacks that do multiples. So if you can see the multiples, you can get into the rhythm and just wait for the second or the third and then parry the next one. Get your rhythm, time it out, boom. Good night, son. And you should have a lot of success. A couple of dogs on this corner. I'm only coming here because I can't quite remember what this is. And I thought for the purpose of the walkthrough, if I just ran through all the areas, it would be... You know, still a great walkthrough, but I wanted to do something a little differently on this one. I wanted to show you um, paths that I would take when I'm going through trying to build something, trying to crush the enemies and, you know, have ultimate victory. A lot of people have asked me, Chris, why don't you do 100% completion walkthroughs? Apparently they're really popular and it could be a good idea. Uh, I think it's a great idea. It's just it's a lot of investment for something I don't particularly enjoy. And... Um, I thought that by taking my time a little bit more with this walkthrough, I could make a, maybe a slight deviation from my normal path and please a couple more people. As I uh, spam parries on the lift coming down and show you my pretty purple face. But coming up is one of the Overrider Knights, one of the people who were sent out from Irithyll. 
and he's incredibly dangerous. This is a creature that can be parried, this is a creature uh, that can be stunned quite a lot, but he is so erratic, he does such high damage, and he has all kinds of multi-hit, massive distance covering, horizontal slashing moves, that he is a very lethal opponent. He drops a fantastic straight sword, if you're interested, that has frostbite on it. A great way of killing him is to just keep using the doorway, because he will never exit that room. Uh, you can go in there and be all manly if you want to and roll and evade and things, which I recommend because you'll learn how to fight them a little bit better. But for the purposes of this walkthrough, we're going to skip him and we're going to be taking on the Corvians. So, the, there is the Corvian Storyteller and the Standard Warrior. These are the standard guys. They will transform when you get close to them, but be very careful. You see how he sprouts the first wing, then he sprouts the second wing, and then he aggros? If you hit them during the transformation, you will skip it. You will immediately give them all their wings and they'll attack. So it is not clever to hit them and spam R1 unless you do it before they transform. If you can hit them before they scream, you're fine. Hit away. Sign up their ass. Piece of piss. But if you don't, you will give them the advantage. So my recommendation, like just then, he went instant transformation because I hit it in. My advice for this creature, if you're ever having trouble, if he starts transforming, backstab him. This is the storyteller, by the way. He's the one who rallies the troops, he casts poison, and he also has a potential to drop the deep infusion to make your weapon hollow. So he's a very useful enemy to farm, but it is quite rare, so, you know, get all your farming gear on. But the Corvians are quite simple. R1, mash before transformation, backstab post transformation, and then kill them on the wake up. Uh, pretty simple area, pretty simple enemy. But as we move across here, we're going to be going into a little cave and saying hello to an old friend. This is a trap, by the way, the brigand axe. It's to be like, oh, I'll check my menus. And then there's a woman here who we all recognize as being very similar to a certain NPC in Blighttown. So uh, I'm going to, to try and kill Mildred. I go for a parry and I mess it up because I'm a beast. And she nearly kills me. So God bless those iframes, eh? That was not the cleanest fight. <laughs> She is using a butcher knife. This is an A scaling strength weapon. It is fantastic early on and I definitely recommend choosing it on your strength build if you want to use a different weapon other than the deep axe or some kind of straight sword. That's the reason I've kept this in the walkthrough as we pick up the brigand daggers which are an interesting weapon that I'm not a big fan of. And now we're going to be moving towards the next bonfire uh, where good old Anri and Horace are and I was gonna kill them to get her weapon but I'd never killed her before in this particular sequence and I didn't know if there was any clever strategies to do it so my thought immediately went to trying to get them to fall off so that's what you're gonna see me try and do but it doesn't go so well I end up killing myself and Anri kills herself and then I have to fight Horus so there's gonna be some really weird crossfades happening in a moment guys but the strategy is quite simple if you stand on the edge you can bait them into attacking you and if you've got spook on you can survive the fall so you survive the fall, they don't, and you get a really free, easy kill. On top of this, if you want to fight them 2v1, you can do that. It's not all that difficult, but at the moment we don't have the highest vigor, and uh, they can hit quite hard if they start stunlocking you, so be very careful here, guys. But hit the bonfire, and unfortunately, my strategy next is going to involve killing these NPCs, which is very sad, because I do like them, and I don't like killing NPCs in this game. But this is the... One of the only ways to get this weapon outside of doing a massive quest, so... This is post-aggro, post-death right now. I run over here. I tried to use Alluring Skulls. It didn't work so great. Here's Horus attacking me. There's the guard break. There's a riposte. There's Anri doing a sword skill up my ass. I'm gonna get anal fissures if she's not careful. Give over, woman. There's a couple of slashes. Come on, AI, this way. But, yeah, this goes messy, so... Learn from my mistakes, get them to fall off, get them to crucify themselves. You can stand on a little lip to my to my right at this moment, and they'll just kill themselves like it's the forest. It's really useful. Uh, but this is going to be messy as shit. And you might be thinking, well, Chris, why didn't you re-record this? Uh, I would have done, but once you kill NPCs on the game, it's it's all recorded, and, you know, you can't go back. And I would have had to have played a, a new character to get back here, but I've maxed out the slots on this particular memory card, so I couldn't start a new character. Look how bad this is, by the way. This is rough. Enemies on me. Oh, oh, there it was. See that? Bad idea. I'm dead. But if you listen, forgive me, Horace. 
she followed me and she died. Or she got killed by something else. So that was her dead. That's Anri dead. We respawn. And then Horus has a go. So now we just have to kill this guy. Same rules apply here, guys. If you do more than two attacks on him, he might parry you. So be very careful. If he guards, kick him and get the repost. Use uh, his healing fetish to punish him. And be careful of his kick. Because he does multiple kicks. Yeah, he likes to kick too. He's a dirty little spammer, this one. He also has a ton of life, but he has a fat roll, so you can generally punish his rolls very easily. Look how fast that heal was, dude. It's broken, this game. It's so broken. There's the kick. Takes the kick on his shield like a champion. Very close to death. See you later, Horus. So, very messy, but we got there in the end. And he drops the Llewellyn shield, which is one of my favourite shields in the game. It was my favourite shield in Dark Souls 2. And then this is the weapon we're going to be using once we get higher luck. Because it is incredibly powerful. There it is. It is a beast of a weapon. But it doesn't look too impressive just yet. Our raw weapon is still stronger. But just you wait guys. Later on that weapon is really going to pay dividends for us. So trust me on this one. If you've seen any speedruns you'll already know just how powerful it can be. Um, and now we're going to be moving into the rest of the crucifixion woods. So I believe... Uh, as I pick up my souls and I hit the bonfire, I'm going to go back to Firelink and maybe do some more sundries. Do some more miscellaneous tasks. Yeah, I think that's exactly what I'm doing. Probably going to try and put some twinkling onto this weapon to see if I can get it as strong as the raw weapon. But I don't think I succeed. So we'll just have to see here, guys. You'll notice that, is it Ceres, I think she's called? The Dark Moon Warrior Lady's turned up. So as long as you haven't joined Rosario's Fingers, you can start her NPC quest, should you choose to. You can get some interesting items and some interesting lore from doing it. There's me realising it's Twinkling Titanite, and at the moment, only ways to get Twinkling Titanite are by jumping off the roof and killing the lizard, and by dropping certain items for the crows. Everything else will be Crystal Lizards in the levels, and I think the first bunch of Crystal Lizards you might be able to get is on your way to Cathedral of the Deep. There may be one or two other ones you can grab, but I'm not remembering them at the moment. But more procrastination in the Firelink Shrine or the Nexus, depending on what you call it. I'm going to be picking up Prism Stones and I'm going to be picking up a large leather shield. These are the two items that if you leave to the crows, you will get Twinkling Titanite. And that's exactly what we're going to do, it seems. So if anybody wasn't watching the first video here... I've gone the wrong way, by the way. Look at this terrible. Instead of going up the other side, I've gone up here towards good old Leopold. But if you didn't watch my first video, I came up here and I did a, a little bit of a tricky jump that gets you on top of a roof that generally needs a very expensive key. Uh, if you do what I do here, um, you can do this without buying the key. It's a kind of tricky jump and it's going to enable you to access the crows prematurely and pick up an Estus Shard. So if you've not been following my walkthrough and you've just found this video, uh, we're just repeating what we did in that initial video. And we're going to come up here and we're going to drop some items for the crows. This is going to give us Twinkling Titanite and it's going to give us perhaps one upgrade on the sword just to see what it looks like with a little bit of damage on it. So there's the first one, bit of Twink, and here comes the second one. It's in the shield, I don't know what I'm doing. There you go, that shield. Drop the shield. And pick up the twink. And then from here, if we go out the opposite side near where the master swordsman was, we can drop down the side and fight a crystal lizard. So that's what we're going to do now, it seems. My goodness, does this game look slow. I wish it ran at 60 frames per second on consoles, but I guess I'm just a dreamer forever thinking the consoles will be worth a damn. But just hop over here, go around this little cheeky corner, and there's going to be a crystal lizard waiting for you. You'll hear him before you see him, and then exploit his AI so that he runs into a wall that's close to you rather than a distant wall by just pivoting. The general rule of those lizards is they will run directly away from you, straight forward. So whichever direction you're facing, he will turn to run in that direction. You want to use that to your advantage. But there was the twink. The only thing left to do now, guys, is to run back into Firelink, give it to Andre, upgrade the weapon, and then we'll be going back to the Road of Sacrifices, and we'll be going towards the Farren Keep, and moving on our path towards our very first Lord of Cinder. I'm going to try and drop on her head, am I? Yeah, I am. I fucked it up. Terrible. It still counts. We got her. You can do a cheeky roll off that first set of stairs where you land on her head, and for some reason, I do it all the time. I don't mean to. I just kind of do... 
but there's the first upgrade. Damage on it still doesn't look spectacular, but it's getting there. And it's the bleed that's important. It's the speed, it's the bleed, and it's the look. It all helps. But that's the uh, end of the video, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you on a further odyssey into the wonderful land of... Is it Lordran? Is it not Lordran? I'll let you decide. But yeah, thank you for watching, guys. You take care now.